We're gonna do five reasons why I think the Lumix S5 is the best camera you can buy for under $2,000 in 2021. The Lumix S5 is a camera that I have already reviewed before. So if you want a less in detail, but more in detail, in depth, non in depth review of this camera, check out the video wherever it is up on the screen right now. That is my review of the camera. This camera is just gonna break down my thoughts about it now that I've had it for a few months and now that I'm using it as pretty much my main camera for photo and video and why I really think it's such a stellar deal for $19,000, $19, yeah, imagine this camera was $90,000. If I spent 19 grand on this camera, it better make me breakfast. Number one is pretty self-explanatory. The whole camera system, including a lens, is gonna set you back 1997. I don't know why I said it like that, because it sounds stupid. $1,997 before tax. So you're probably looking at, what, 2,300 bucks all said and done when you've paid the government what you need to pay them. But at the end of the day, you have a full frame mirrorless camera and a pretty damn good lens that we'll talk about a little bit more later for two grand. And really, when you look at the camera landscape right now, there is barely anything that is coming close to what the Lumix S5 can do at this price point. You could probably compare it to a Sony a7S III. You could compare it to a Sony a7C. I really wouldn't compare it to stuff in the Super 35 area or APS-C for that matter. I just think that this is a full frame camera, regardless of its sensor, all the things that it does, which we'll get into more, is a fantastic, a fantastic, it's a fantastic deal for $2,000. Why am I talking like this? <laughs> I just think it is a wonderful deal for two grand and you don't even have to watch the rest of this video, just hear it from me. It's a Panasonic GH5 that's full frame, it's two grand with a lens and it's a good lens. Things are fine, everything's fantastic. Have a good one, enjoy the camera, enjoy the rest of this video if you're gonna keep watching. Otherwise, peace, I'm Patrick. Don't bother subscribing because you'll just get more of this bull Reason number two, look, I don't like to talk about sensors. It's just something that, you know, at the end of the day, cameras are cameras. You can get into all this stuff about the look of full frame or the fact that it doesn't let as much light when you have micro four thirds than full frame. Or, you know, some people just say that APS-C is the best of both worlds, which I could definitely see an argument for as well. But there is something to be said that full frame is an industry standard for not only photos, but it's becoming a video thing too. We're starting to see a lot more large format video creeping into television and movies in the digital space. And so really, if I had to put it down to why I prefer full frame now and why I've really enjoyed full frame with this S5, I don't have to do math in my head every time I wanna use a lens. A 35 millimeter lens is 35 millimeters. A 20 millimeter lens is 20 millimeters. I'm so used to doing this 1X crop, 2X crop, 1.6X crop, all these stupid crops when I throw lenses on a camera. And then if you get into speed boosters and all that, just math. I'm just, I'm sitting there and I'm like seven, 1.7X crop, 2, 2X, 40 mil is an 80 mil. But if I use the speed booster, then it's going down to 1.7X or 1.6. But if I'm using the ultra speed booster, or is it the mega speed booster? Or is it the fucking ultimate Speed. I don't know what speed booster I'm using. It's just a shit show. So regardless of the sensor and what it can do, I don't like doing math. And that's a big reason why I've preferred using full frame. And as I look into lenses for this system, I like that it is what it is. It's what it is. Math jokes aside, full frame is full frame. So we all know that it has that delicious bokeh. We know that it's great in low light. It's got a bigger sensor. It's letting in more light from your lenses. So in general, full frame is Better. Reason number three, the IBIS. Everybody loves internal image body stabilization and I always get it confused with IBS, which is something I suffer from, irritable bowel syndrome. And it's actually April, which is irritable bowel syndrome awareness month. I bet you didn't know that. You learned something new in this video already and we're already halfway through it. Look how long it took to learn something. Irritable bowel syndrome aside and farts, let's talk about the internal image body stabilization on the Lumix S5. Look, we all know that the Lumix GH5 and even the stuff that Olympus was doing with Micro Four Thirds with IBIS is the cream of the crop. It's the best that you can get out there. Now, I have used a Sony A7S III. I've used the X-T4, which also has IBIS. And I gotta tell you, this S5 is definitely better than those two cameras. Does it mean it's the best in IBIS? No, but is it gonna kill your micro jitters and it's gonna do exactly what you need it to do, which is if you're out being handheld and you're shaking a little bit, it's gonna get rid of those micro jitters and it makes the handheld feel 
really nice. Like here's an example where I was just literally holding the camera out the window while driving, which you should definitely not do because that is probably illegal. But you can see that I can get that classic documentary B-roll shot of the houses just by holding it out the window. Now, if I was using any other camera that didn't have IBIS, this thing would be shaking all over the place. So IBIS really comes in clutch, especially on a full frame camera like this, which we don't see that often. Is it getting more popular? Yes. Are we at the point where it's as good as what it was doing on smaller sensors? No, but is it a good step forward? Absolutely. I'm gonna keep the video stuff within IBIS under this reason number three. Like these, there's no rules here, it's a video. I could do 14 reasons and call it five reasons just because the title sounds better. It's my video, I'll do what I want. So let's talk about video under this whole IBIS camera. Category. This is just such an incredibly competent video camera. It's going to shoot 422 Cinema 10 bit 4K, 150 megabits per second internally. Now, 150 megabits per second doesn't seem like a whole lot, but in reality, when you're shooting with this, this codec is extremely strong. You can do a lot with just the internal recording on this camera. But if you're someone who wants raw and you're trying to get into this whole new world of everybody shooting raw video, guess what? This thing does 6K ProRes raw to a Ninja 5. And I talked about that a little bit more in my full review and I did some samples too. Look, if you're looking for a 6K camera, which is gonna rival a Red Komodo, and on top of that, the Red Komodo is APS-C. So this is a full frame 6K raw camera. It's shooting log, it's shooting in V-log by that matter. And it looks wonderful. The highlight roll off of this camera is so nice for a digital mirrorless camera. Coming from like a Fuji X-C3 and my Fuji cameras in general, having a video camera that doesn't feel so digital anymore is such a blessing. I really love the video that comes out of this camera. And honestly, it's better than what I was ever doing with my GH5. And I already thought the GH5 was quite legendary. Everyone's always gonna be wondering about autofocus with this camera. Look, I'm shooting in autofocus right now. I have it on face detect. I even have the Wi-Fi going to an iPad so I can monitor myself right now. I'm sure it hasn't been perfect this entire video. I'm sure it's come and gone just a little bit here and there. Is it good enough for me? Absolutely. Could I use it on a client thing? I probably would. It depends on what I was shooting. If it was something documentary, I'd probably be okay with the autofocus on this camera. Is it as good as Sony and Canon? Definitely not. Is it usable? Absolutely. Everyone thinks that the autofocus is terrible on these cameras and relatively speaking, yeah, it is not the best. I can guarantee you that it's not the best. But in terms of actual practical real world situations, it's more than good enough for me. It'll definitely be a personal thing for you. Look, I love using manual lenses and I still prefer to manually focus, but in a pinch like this, when I have to film myself, I can get by with the autofocus in this. And I'm in full frame mode right now. If I switch this over to APS-C, the autofocus is as good as what I'd use on my Fuji X-E4 and my Fuji X-T3. And I actually pretty much was only using those Fuji cameras for video because the autofocus was so good. So this definitely replaces all of my video cameras, thankfully. All right, this is an area where, I don't know, Lumix is just sort of like falling off the map for some reason, but these are wonderful photo cameras. In fact, they're photo cameras first, and the S5 is no exception in this area. The Lumix S5 is one of the best photo cameras I've ever used, and look, all over this channel, I have praised Fuji. And to this day, I still love Fuji cameras, mostly for the shooting experience. But if we're just talking about image quality, this is one of the best photo cameras I have ever used. Something that really interesting happened, I brought it on a client shoot recently, one of my burrito clients where I was shooting burritos for them. And I had switched to using Fuji with that client probably last year or so. And when I was using my GH5 before I switched to the Fuji, I feel like these photos look similar or closer to what the color was like when I was shooting on my GH5. And I didn't notice how much Fuji really changes the look of an image, even if you're not using the film simulations. Like if you just use the standard raw profile, it still has a look to it. Whereas with this Lumix S5, I found that the colors are so much more faithful to real life. And if I want to give it a look, if I want it to feel like a film simulation, or if I want it to feel vintage or give it some sort of LUT kind of vibe, I have the control of that. Whereas with Fuji, I feel a little bit more baked in. For better or for worse, there are gonna be some people that actually prefer that baked in look. And there will be times when I'll wanna use Fuji because I like the film simulations. But from a professional standpoint, if I'm using this for client work, I definitely prefer the more natural, straight out of camera look that this Lumix is providing over my Fuji cameras. Pretty recently with my buddy Lee Zavitz, check out his channel, link in the description. We went to Niagara Falls just to do kind of a photo walk to check out all the abandoned amusement park stuff and all the things that are out in Niagara Falls right now. And so instead of taking my Fuji camera or just shooting my phone, I wanted to really put the Lumix S5 to the test. I wanted to put it in a scenario where typically I would use my Fuji camera, to be honest. And I, I loved it. I'm gonna show you some photos that I took with it. Here's a quick slideshow of images that I shot with the Lumix S5 and the kit. 20 to 60 millimeter, I hope you enjoy them. And when we come back, I got a couple more tricks up my sleeve to convince you why this camera is so dope.
Look, the final reason that I love this camera is this kit lens too. So the kit lens is part of this $2,000 deal. And when I thought, you know, 20 millimeter, 60 millimeter, F3.5 to F5.6, I was like, eh, it's a pretty whatever kit lens. And then I realized I've been shooting the Fuji kit lens for like two years now, which is F2.8 to F4, 18 to 55. And when you do kind of the math with all that conversion crap, it is quite similar to what I'm shooting now with this 20 to 60. So as a kit lens on full frame, it's pretty amazing. And to really demonstrate why this kit lens is so awesome, here's a reel of video that I also shot in Niagara Falls. So you're gonna get a good glimpse of like what this lens looks like, how it feels with the IBIS. A lot of this is the S and Q mode, which is how it slows down internally in the camera. So it's 60 FPS to 24 FPS, all handheld, all in autofocus as well. And I think it's the best way to demonstrate why I love this lens so much is that you can get close and get some shallow depth of field, but you can also go nice and wide at 20 millimeter and it looks pretty damn good. So here's a reel of footage with the 2060 on the S5. This is definitely not gonna be the last video I make on this camera. I, as I use it, I'm discovering more and more reasons why I love it so much, but because I just saw that price drop, I really wanted to get this video out because I'm sure a lot of you had questions about it. And there's, there's content about the S5 online for sure. It's just not the most popular camera. And I really want more people to understand why this camera is so damn good. And the price is just so hard to beat right now that I'm actually struggling to recommend other cameras outside of this one for people because it just does everything you need to do. Is it perfect at absolutely everything? No, but it's a master of a lot of trades and a jack of none. That made no sense. Is it perfect in every area? No, but when you consider the price and what it is capable of from a professional standpoint, if it's your first camera, wherever you land on the spectrum of needing a new camera or a second body or a third body or whatever, I really think you should consider this Lumix S5 with the kit 20 to 60. Down the road, I'm gonna start reviewing some other lenses for the system too, as I get more into this L mount and full frame in general. So I'm excited to explore this a bit more, but until then, my name is Patrick Tomaso. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to, leave a comment. I'll probably delete it if it's mean, or I will troll you, reply, and then delete it right away. And then you'll get the notification that I replied to your comment, but then the comment will be gone. And then I'll ban you from the channel so you can't engage with me ever again. Otherwise, my name is Patrick Tomasso. Hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers. Perfect timing.